this is year 11 data handling video part one. So in this video, we're going to just focus on how to actually um, set up data tables so that it's consistent and looks um, the right way in physics and also how to plot a graph properly in Excel, which some of you already know how to do. So if you do know how to do this, um, try to sketch a graph that looks identical to what you have on your OneNote and see if you can actually set up your OneNote so that it can display exactly that. Um, and obviously it would be a race against me on the video talking through it. So first thing um, is that in terms of headings of columns in physics we like to have both the name and also the symbol. So in this particular case the distance between two objects the distance would be R and the units, which we also need to include, very important because it could these columns of values could be in kilometres or centimetres, but these are in metres. The other thing that we need is the gravitational force. So these two columns are really just an indication of the gravitational attraction between two objects. So gravitational force um, has a symbol F from our work in year 10, but we know that there are different types of forces in physics, like electrostatic force as well. So we want to make sure that people know that this is gravitational force when we're just writing the symbol. So we really want to put a subscript G and also the units which are in newtons, so in brackets. How do we actually do subscripts in Excel? Just highlight G and what you can do is go to font and actually click on subscript. Now you could cheat and not do that. You could also get it to just reduce in size. It actually sort of looks the same. So uh, depending which way you want to do this, but this is actually good enough, I think, for me. So another thing that we need to be aware of is if you look at the first column, um, you can see that there are actually what we call two significant figures. So for example, um, in the first number there, it's not just one meter, but 1.0. So it's actually stating that you actually know to the 10th place, decimal place, that you know that it's actually just 1.0 rather than 1.2 or 1.1, you know exactly. The column on the left, so column A, is actually really consistent, but column B is not. So here's what the problem is. Down below, um, you can see that the last number here only has three significant figures, so 4.12. Meanwhile, the first number here um, is actually recorded as having six different figures because you also have these placeholders at the back here, which indicates that you're even more accurate. So what we want to do before we plot the graph, or we set up the table, is to have the significant figures in these columns as consistent. So what we're going to do is just push these little guys back using this little function up here. And I'm just going to make these all have three significant figures. So it displays properly for us. And so this will definitely not be 333.5, but it becomes 333, 334, rounding up. Now, another thing that I didn't talk about, but I already did, is actually the wrap text function. So this little button here allows you to wrap the text into multiple lines. If you don't click wrap text, you'll get weird things that look like this, where the um, column headings run into each other. So by clicking wrap text, so just left click um, on row one, you can wrap text, you can actually wrap the text around. And so you can then put column headings around, uh, column lines around these and make it center aligned, just making sure everything's consistent. Looks perfect. Next thing that we need to do, plot a graph. So the quickest way to plot a graph is really just to highlight the, ver um, the column of values and Go to insert. Now there's lots of different graphs that you can do in Excel. Uh, in physics we're not going to use pi or bar graphs. We love these little things called xy scatter graphs. And if you choose it, um, you can actually choose graphs that have um, joined lines, just lines, straight lines, straight line with dots, but we really just want the dots by themselves and then we want to put a trend line to it. So just the dot by themselves. Once you do that, now a lot of students struggle with Excel, um, mainly because um, the fact that they don't really think about what they're plotting in the graph. So while we're here, just take a moment to stop and think about what you did in year 10. We know that the vertical axis needs to record the dependent variable and the horizontal axis needs to record the independent variables. So in this particular case, 
we know that the gravitational force depends on the distance. So gravitational force will have to be the vertical axis, and it is because the largest number is 334, it's just below 350. Meanwhile, um, the horizontal axis only goes up to 9 or 10, which matches what we need. So next thing is how to set up a graph in physics. So we really need to not just have a chart title, but also have some axes labels. So these are called axes titles, and you can access those with this little green plus button over here. And if you just tick checkbox, um, the boxes will come up on the side here. So what you can do to save you time, because if you have done the column headings properly, you can just copy these and paste them into here. And you can also copy this and paste that into here. That's probably the fastest way to do this, which means setting up those columns properly will save you time. Um, one thing that might bother you is the fact that this, these fonts are really, really tiny. So you might want to make them just a little bit bigger um, so you can see the axes labels. Okay. Next thing is we probably should edit the chart title. Um, for those of you that have not remembered anything from year 10, just a reminder, chart title really is Y axis versus X. So you really just need, um, again, the column headings, but this time we don't need the units versus, just delete that, and copy this across without the units. Now you notice that here it looks a bit weird, even though I have set this up to be a smaller font. So I might just go into here and make that truly a subscript. Okay, that's set up beautifully. And also over here, um, some of the editing does to do when you copy and paste. So you might want to just make sure, especially with subscript and superscripts, um, that it's consistent. Another thing that you might consider also adding um, is actually editing some of the grid lines. So notice that at the moment I've just got only the major grid lines. You can also add the minor grid lines um, of both. So it actually looks more like a piece of graph paper that you are very familiar with. This is helpful, especially if you have been asked to do interpolation, which is to read what happens in between um, your data points. So it helps if there are grid lines there. Another thing that you will need to be able to do um, for physics is to add trend lines. So, um, weirdly, I don't know why, but if you actually go to trend line, it just puts in a straight line. And you can tell it's not straight, so there's no point using a straight line. So go to this little button um, that is right there, and it comes up with um, all these other options, and you actually want to go to more options. So hopefully by now you have seen a graph, probably know what sort of graph it is. So if you actually click on the trend line, um, you should be able to see that, okay, it's not really exponential, it's definitely not linear, it's not logarithmic. Um, polynomials can be fitted to this, but it's actually probably a power relationship. So if you click on power, it will actually fit it automatically, but we don't only want that, we also want to see um, the equation and also the R squared value. Um, the reason being that if we can see the equation and also the R squared value, we will then be able to determine whether it's a good fit or not. So an R squared value is what we call the residual. It actually measures how good the fit is. So if with an R squared value of one, it literally means that your line is perfect. Um, if you have anything below that, um, the further you go away from one, the worse the fit. And we'll go through an example later on on actual data that doesn't actually follow perfectly um, the relationship that you expect. So here is my, um, my perfect graph. Well, nearly. There's one thing that I haven't actually done yet, and that would be changing the values or the variables in the equation. So I'm just going to make the equation a little bit bigger so you can actually all see it. 
Okay, um, Excel actually always will give you the equation in terms of y and x. It does not recognize that you've actually changed and relabeled the columns uh, with symbols that are very relevant to what you're doing. So now's a good time to change it here. So the y-axis is fg. Just highlight the g and just put in a subscript. And meanwhile, the x is actually r. And I'm just going to put a little bracket around the r so you can definitely see that it's to the power of negative 2. Here is where we'll also edit the um, actual radiant. Why? Because um, I know that my significant figures is actually quite small, so I'm just going to change this and round that to a point 0.5. This concludes how we can set up a graph um, in Excel. For those of you that have tried to do this uh, by yourself, just make sure that if there are things that don't work on your graph and doesn't look like this, please make sure that your graph is edited so that it resembles something like this that we expect to see in physics, especially in reports.